So you guys can see the, the presentation, that's the right. Yes. That's okay. So once again, my name is Marufu. I'm taking you through management information system. So what, what, what I would want us to understand first before we move, see, whenever you're trying to define something, whenever you're doing a course, you need to understand what the course tells, the keywords that are in the course. In, in our case, we have management. It's a word on its own. In the other word is information, and the other word is system. Those are three words combined to make, to make up uh, a name. What in your in your in your vocabulary do you assume management is, Mr. Edward? Management. What do you think it means? That you no, know, this person is managing this. We're, we're going to talk to management. Mm, from my understanding, uh, the manage the word management. Uh, means to coordinate, um, organize, and uh, plan. Yeah, so uh, okay. for example, maybe a manager is someone who, who plans uh, maybe the work schedules for his team and organizes resources. Yeah. That's fine. Those are somewhat Major, major roles of, of money of a manager. So when we're talking of management now, we, we are also talking of um, the, the people who control the, how can I put, the employees who are in charge of controlling a certain, a certain specific area. That's why we've got an HR manager is controlling and managing and planning for, for, for the HR, the HR department. You have you have IT department. So basically, this means each and every each and every um, department needs to have a manager. So what we mean by management also does not mean manager only. The director can is also in the management because it, it means he. Let me accept this person. It means that he also has um, manages the managers. You understand what I'm saying? The managers, the IT manager manages the employees in the department of the IT, giving them tasks and everything. But there is the IT director who's going to manage the managers, the various managers in the IT, the IT department. So, so these two sit in different levels of, um, of the organization. What do I mean? We, we all know we're going to browse through you wanna well, what exactly that entails. So now we've got another term, information. What we have from from part one, we've been defining information. Information evolves from data. Information becomes processed data. Then from data, that means data is going to either be there's going to be an input where data is, going, data is going to come in and it's going to come out as information. So the third word, so from, from data, so from data, we are going, we, we move from to information. From information, we move to knowledge. From knowledge, we move to uh, wisdom. We are, we are going to read and understand. We've been talking about these things from fundamentals of IT, so I'm sure <coughs> Excuse me. You guys understand um, the information. So the other word that's coming out now is system. System is basically anything that has got input and output and the processing. So um, what I was trying to say, Pepe, information is going to come in. Data is coming in. It's going to be processed, and it comes out as information. So the, it, there's, there's a various layers that we mentioned of, we talked about, we haven't talked about them, but we're going to talk about them in, in, in the future, in the next coming slides. You will get to understand the relationship between one, each and every one of those, those, of those levels. So basically, in a system is for an input, a processing, 
a times a storage area and an output. An example of, of, of a, a, a system that you know. So basically, this applies to every system that we know of. The respiratory system, we inhale oxygen. The lungs process those oxygen absorbed through the process of, is it osmosis or um, what's it called? Those passing through a semi-permeable membrane, diffusion or osmosis. I don't know which one it is. Then blood gets the oxygen, the oxygen, then the concentration, which is in the lungs, carbon dioxide is low. So it moves from the blood to the lungs. Then you exhale carbon dioxide. That is a system. Digestive system, you ingest food. The food is digested, absorbed into the the, through the intestines into the blood and it goes to various organs, then uh, waste comes out. That is the system. So each and every system has got that setup. They has got, uh, we have an input, we have processing, we have an output. So from, from that definition alone, we know we are going to find a way to manage, control, plan, information, which in the in the form of input processing and output. So that is mostly what we are going to try to do in, in this course. Are, are, we, are we in agreement, sir? Yes, sir. We are yeah, together. Yeah. That's fine. Moving on okay. to. Okay, moving on to the next slide. We, 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 we understand what information is. Now we need to find the relevance. We need to know the relevance of information. That is my properties of, 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 of information. What we mean by a good information. It, it should be relevant. It should be accurate. It should be timeless. And it should be complete. What, what do we mean by relevance? Um, Relevant is it is like saying this. I start tutoring you guys on databases or distributed systems. Yet we are doing yet we are doing um, management of information system. I'm providing you with information. We, yes, it's, it's information. Yes, but that information is not relevant to to that particular group. An example in in our um, in our um, context, we want to talk about you get a report of HR um, monthly report, monthly report from HR, and it's sent to the IT IT. That information that information is not relevant. It the the man the IT would not have anything to do with that information, so it's not relevant to 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 that department. Accuracy, that information should be accurate. If you do not give information accurate, you will, you will, it's, it's like this, you, you want to give a report to the manager on, on when a project is going, to be, is going to be completed. When you give him information that is not accurate, he can't also plan in the future. Because at the end of, remember one of the roles that we mentioned, planning, so without planning means good to be, we will not be doing one, one, one of the things that we, we, one of the major objectives that we would have set out to do. So the information needs to be accurate. An example of information that's not accurate is whereby we're saying, um, you, you want to know how much a department, how much a, 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 a department is producing. Let's say it's the um, department which is, the works department. How much? How much? How much cans of Coke, 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 Coke bottles Delta they produce in in a in a day? Someone might say we produce maybe four thousand cans, and someone who says ah we produce roughly about five thousand. So that information, information that is not accurate, tends to be misleading. We, you want to project future plans and you don't have information that's accurate, you will fail to come up with, with a proper model on how that's done. Timeliness is you 
we might say, um, I'll, I, I, I prefer giving you real life examples. All right. Timeliness, you, you are sent to go and buy equipment that is needed to build, let's say, a computer. You're sent to buy a mouse and you go for, for maybe three weeks and then you, you come and tell the manager, we, we failed to buy them because the money now was not enough. See, instead of uh, that information that you're bringing, is you were not bringing it in the right time. Because if you had brought it in a certain time, decisions would have been made to, to solve that, that issue. Another example is you, you might have a situation whereby you provide information that is expired. What do I mean by information that is expired? You, 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 might, you might come and say, um, you might come and explain breaking news that COVID pandemic is deadly. That information now is now within, it's now not in its, um, it's now not as important because, not, not as important per se, it doesn't now carry as much weight as you did say it in 2019, because now everyone knows about it. You, the plant is, is on fire. Your, your plant, your manufacturing plant is on fire. You go to the managers after a day, the plant is on fire. The decisions that they're going to make will not be best because that information that you are bringing in is expired. If you had brought that information there and there to the plant is on fire, they could have called the fire brigade or they could have taken measures to rectify error or fault that day. But if you bring it after a week, that information would have expired. We're coming to now completeness of information. Information needs to be complete. What do I mean? When you ask for a report to report on, let's say, infant mortality rate, you need to give each and every detail that is that is that is necessary if you if you do not give information that is complete you will, the management will end up making wrong or false decisions because it is it is the information is not complete this is where we'll be saying kuti it's it's um selective disinformation it can also lead to incomplete information um you want to build a, a, a building for for your company and you you bring a plan. You you fail to bring a plan, but you bring everything else. The information that you have provided, yes, it's relevant, but it's missing something that's key. That's in, that's there to solve my problems or make decisions on on the above layer, which which would would be in charge of making those decisions. Any questions on information? I like people who ask. Uh, no questions from me as of yet. If there are no questions, we, we, we can proceed. Okay. Explanation is clear, sir. Okay, sir. thank you. Information is a resource. What are, are information is a resource. There are several resources that uh, that need to be in an organization. Um, human resources department. That means the the people, employees are resources. Resources need to be managed, controlled. So, which is the reason why we, 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 we management was created to manage, manage, plan those resources, manage, plan, and uh, control those resources. So, in the IT department, you are controlling and managing and planning um, 
how the department is going to provide the, each and every department has the resources that it's supposed to, to, to cater for. So in, resources could be conceptual or physical. Conceptual resources are used to manage physical resources. Physical resources, these are cars, these are buildings, these are books. But now, information is something that's not tangible, it's conceptual. So now, when, when you're trying to manage those information, that's, that, that brought the evolution or, and need for creation of the information management. So we are, it is a way of managing a resource. So the definition of information management is the process of collecting, storing, managing, maintaining of, of information in all its forms. So basically what we're trying to do is we are trying to, to manage, store, collect, maintain information. That is, that is, that is the core business of management information systems and management manage information management. so information it being a resource resources need to be remember in each and every organization resources can tend to get scarce or scarce resources are, 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 are how can i put it um are dangerous to an organization as well as um, if resources are too many and you have no means of dealing with them, they also tend to be dangerous because you will not be able to make to make to be able to make decisions using that. You end up having to discard necessary 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 data. This 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 concept is one of the key concepts why. Um, Big data was created because we're saying big data, you need to make decisions based on huge sums of huge sums of data. Big data mainly focuses on three fees: volume, variety, and velocity. Volume, the data that you'll be getting is in huge volumes. We're talking of terabytes per day, petabytes per day. So for you to be able to process that data, it's 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 going to be very, very, very difficult. But big data systems can, can, can provide you with the infrastructure and um, infrastructure on how you can handle such huge sums of data. The data that comes in, in big data also is in huge volumes. Huge volumes, huge velocity. It's coming in at, a, at an alarming rate so that when you get a, a terabyte of data each and every day, you might be able to process a terabyte of data over a month. But when it comes in every day, it becomes challenging now to process it. But also big data solves this problem. The other thing is variety. It comes in many forms. It's, it's, we, you're not only limited to, to, to Excel sheets. You've got Excel sheets, we've got PDF documents, you've got web documents, you've got slides, you've got videos, you've got text, you've got pictures, you've got a, a variety of forms that the data comes in. So remember, we, all these challenges are coming in, crippling the amount of decisions that you'd want to do, but big data systems now can assist you to do those, to, to, to make decisions based on that. There, of course, there are a lot of challenges that come because there's infrastructure, there's amount of data sets that's there, and there, there are personnel, that, personnel to manage those things and that brings in certain challenges. But that necessitated this um, um, the processing of data. So remember, there is a direct relationship between data and information because data is just processed information. So that's the relationship in the game. Any, any questions so far, guys? Information management. information management. Welcome, Gladys. If there are no questions, we can proceed. 
Why is information important? Mr. Philmon, what is it? Why is information important? Information is information is important and crucial for an organization or um, a business because it actually helps in planning, organizing, and making decisions. So, using information which is accurate, uh, given timely, really helps the organization to be productive. That's, that's, that's okay. Information is, is important. Um, if, if you don't have information that is, um, that is um, accurate, timely, relevant, you, 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 you tend to make, to make, to make uh, wrong or bad decisions. At the end of the day, um, organizations are able to make proper decisions. Huge decisions affect literally everyone. So, uh, the other importance of information changes changes in business environment. Yeah. All right, let me mute all of um there you go that's good um it says changes in business environment we are now living in a um, global economy in 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 the 90s someone would operate in zimbabwe and so Someone who's nearby in South Africa may not be knowing exactly what your product does. But with the introduction of, 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 of the internet, there was there is globalization whereby we're not saying everything. You can know everything that's happening in the States without you having to physically go there. So now there are no law, there are no more boundaries. So you, you, you discover now you can sell your product in, 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 in Zimbabwe and someone in Malaysia can buy that product. So that's, that, that brought in what's called the global economy, mergence of global economy. So an example would be there are people who freelance. There are sort of there are a lot of freelance platforms that are there. What these freelance platforms do is, if you've got a service that you offer, you just go on their platform and say, "Guys, I offer this service." Then the service might be, let's give basic services, typing, or let's say creating Power BI, creating creating graphs or models that that you're able to create that you've computed to do, and you put a, bring that service to the freelance. Uh, freelance company and the freelance company would would advertise your service so that means could you be getting you be you be getting customers from all over the world if you create a website everyone who's connected to the internet can and will be able to view your product so that's the emergence of the global market we're no longer limited to to geographical locations you 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 if you uh, if you if you're able to edit pictures using what's it called photoshop or what's or color draw whichever whichever software you compete you comfortable with you can create a website or even go on social media that people would send their pictures you edit their pictures and then you send the picture back as opposed to back then when internet wasn't so, when let's say internet wasn't there, you people need to come to your shop, bring their physical pictures, you manipulate or edit their pictures, then print their pictures, give them back. So it's got a lot of advantages that you can you can you can 
manipulate that without you're not constrained to geographic location. So the emergence of global economy, you won't know what's 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 let me use the word trending if you don't have the information on that particular area. There's a new area that came in where we're saying the online shops, where you're saying you can you can you can sell whatever you want to sell wherever you are, and you have it delivered everywhere else. Amazon is doing it, and a lot of sites that are doing that, that are doing. They are now bridging the, the, the global economy. They are now bridging physical barriers, so you can you can do way more. So now. For you will not be able to know the global economy if you do not have that information. So that is one importance of, of, of information, which is the changes in business environment. The other is transformation of the industry, industrial economies. We are now what in what called the third industrial age. The first one, the first industrial age, was the invention of, of wheel. Fire and probably yeah. So information industry back then was limited to the technology that was in in that era. That was the first industrial state, industrial age. Then the invention of the engine that brought steam engine, industrial uh, diesel engine, petrol engine, and it brought to motors, creation of motors. Then motors comes in conveyor belts. The conveyor belts brings assembly lines. Assembly lines brings um, automation of, of creating things. So uh, now you can create a car probably five hours a day. You, you, the car will be complete. So these mechanisms improved the way um, industries performed. So that was the second industrial stage. And if you know, if you read, if you history is, is okay, you discover that that's where a lot of infrastructure was built in, in other Western countries. That's where a lot of industries were built. That's where conglomerates emerged. And you can read widely on, on the transformation of the industrial stage. So now what we are now in is called the third industrial stage, whereby we, we have moved to new emerging technologies now, which are which is where you, the degree that you can do becomes important because we're now including things like cloud computing, Internet of Things, big data, blockchains, artificial intelligence, machine learning, G, 5G. So there's you now you're now creating an environment where we are trying to, to better the environment that's there. There is a system where there are companies whereby markets are readily available and delivery is going to be made regardless of human interference. If, if, if a, 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 an order is going to be delayed, that order is automatically uh, updated to the clients that were going to be delayed in such and such a time, so it creates it creates a value chain which is efficient. So that efficiency cannot be realized unless and until we we, we have got information that is valid. That is one of the important of information. The other one, the other the other importance of information is improving the skill. You. Computer skills means now, as opposed to just having a guy typing, we now have various levels of, of expertise when it comes to 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 the so-called computers. Um, long back, I'm sure we used to have people to repair computers. People would use computers. That's it. People type, you know, typing. Either, either you're typing or you are faxing, and, and it was it was simple. But now, with the emergence of of technology, with improvement in technology, with the steps in technology, 
we now have various various um, fields of expertise. In an organization now, you now need uh, systems analysts. You now have you now need network administrators. You now need network technicians. You now need database administrators. You now need engineers. You now need requirement engineers. So computer skills now become more important so that we add value to 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 to, to the information system. So, which brings us to an information system. What is an information system? Yes, an information system, as you as I said before, that a system involves input, processing, and output. So. When we apply this concept to information system, it entails that we, we we are saying an information system is whereby we are going to give data that is going to be processed and give us a, an output of um, an output on, of information that we can use to manage our organization. I think so. Uh, that that's okay. It, 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 it is a combination of information and systems. So basically what we're trying to do is fig, find a way to ensure that information is is either an input or an output. This is what we mean. Um input data from from uh, let's say a technician. He processes that data into information. Then he gives that information to his manager. The manager receives the technician's information as data. Processes that information. He generates his reports and processes that information. He produces, he processes that data into information. Then the manager gives that information to the director. The director gets that information as data goes to him, he needs to further process it. After he processes it, he produces his reports. Then the director gives that info, his information probably to the CEO. The CEO gets that information, that information is data. So that is the, one of the, the, the relationships between, between um, information systems, whether you're moving from, from the TPS to the tactical to the management. So each level gives information to the layer above, but it's, it's, it, when he receives that information, it's obtained as uh, as data. Thank you very much, sir. So we have we have three layers of management. The top level, the top level management, middle level management, lower level management. Top level being strategic management, middle level being tactical management and operational being the lower lower level. These operate in, in, in a different manner. Each one of these get different information, pro produce different information from different sources of that. The way they process their things is different. The way they make their decisions is different. You discover there will be terms like structured data, what structured decisions, and semi structured decisions, and non structured decisions. So, semi structured decisions that they make is if a car breaks down, you either park the car or you either take the car to the mechanic. Those decisions are structured. If you have a, 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 a plant, you are the plant manager, let's say you're the section manager, and an employee falls sick. The way you handle that is structured. Either the employee goes home, you can or you. <laughs> 
and not feed up a bus. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's the decisions that are there, they, they are structured. You, you, you can remove one person and you put in another different person. Then the decisions that that person that you have brought in to me, they are going to do the same because there is there are operational documents that support the decisions that the person makes. If you have an example, we are now in the COVID pandemic. If you if you if one of your subordinates falls ill, how you handle that is structured. We know you you get your 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 14 days. You you get tested if you're if you're COVID positive, you get you get treatment. When you get better, you you get your 14 days quarantine or self-isolation. Then after that, you are tested again. If you if you if you test positive, you 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 given another 14 days. So those are called structured decisions. You remove one person, you put in another person. The decisions they make, they're going to be they're going to be identical because they are written down decisions. Now, unstructured decisions now are decisions that are made whereby you they are not written down on the procedure on how how to tackle such a feat. An example. Can anyone give me an example of an unstructured decision? Mr. Edward. Unstructured decision. All right. An unstructured decision, an example would be sales are dropping at, at your at your a company. You you want to improve sales. There is no there is no written down procedure on how to improve sales. So it's up to you to implement a necessary strategy to improve sales. So if we if we remove the person who made a strategy of sales and we put another person there, chances are they're going to make different different um, decisions. And the decision is unstructured. It depends with the person and the, uh, the strategy that they want to employ. If you want another example is Sales are increasing. They have uh, they've they've exponentially grown. So the nature of decision that you take to sustain the market. Are you going to create another plant to meet demand, or are you are you going to lease a plant to 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 cater demand are you going to create another product to cater for a certain demand that means you have segmented your market so so what what's the nature of the product that you're going to create so so the decision is not the decision that's made is not um it's not defined so anyone if you remove a person and put in another person the decision that they're going to make is going to be different. So we, we've, we've explained structured decisions. We've explained unstructured decisions. Now there is semi-structured decision, which is a combination of two of the two. The decisions are structured in a way that they can allow you to improve or alter or Put heavy input on how how that can be done. An example is um, someone um, gets cut at work, gets injured, gets injured at work. It, the injury may not be serious that the person, but procedure dictates if someone is injured, 
and you to get rest. So it's it's up to you now to 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 make a decision. Although you've got certain guidelines, but you can go out of your way to make a certain decision. These decisions for people who have been working or who are formally employed, these these kind of decisions, this kind of layer decisions would tend to be easier because we we have seen or we have seen these kind of decisions being made. Any questions, guys? Before we proceed, any questions? Okay, so, uh, so we are saying the unstructured uh, decisions are applied at the top level management, is it? Precisely. Okay, thank Precisely. you. Any questions? Any other questions, sir? That's fine. So, so let's proceed. I have a diagram that's there. There are, um, there are three pie charts. These three pie charts will assist us in, in explaining and understanding um, the various roles of each and every um, layer. It's similar to the one that I gave you in your assignment. Whereby we're saying we've got top level. The top level has got little to do with stuff. They control little to no stuff because the top management only focuses with, let's say if you if it's your director, he only has maybe two managers. You have um, an IT director and you've got a hardware manager, you've got a network manager and you've got a software manager. So the director would be managing just those three those three to those three staff members and 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 the the hardware manager might have maybe 20 technicians so you you see he, he would be dealing with a lot more to do with staff so if you see top management the the the, the greater amount of, of of time portion is planning they are planning on where they see the organization in 10 years, where they see the organization in 20 years, uh, whether they're going to diversify products, whether they're going to eliminate a product, or whether they're going to close or jump ship, or whether they're going to create um, a, a market in a different area. So top management have, um, how can I put it? strategize on the business where they see the business in the in the future they are uh, they mainly deal with external 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 um external forces if the economy is bad like we're in they need to make decisions to 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 curve that they the, the employees in 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 all the employees don't need to worry where they're going to get their salary, but the top management are the ones that are going to worry on how they're going to give you your salaries, how they're going to, if they're going to increment, if whatever decision that affects everyone at the bottom is done by the top management. This is the strategic layer. They, they strategize. So I, I would want you to have an appreciation of the difference between top management and middle management. Top management, they create strategies. Middle management, they create tactics. You, there's a thin line between those two in terms of definitions, but I would want you to appreciate the difference between strategies and tactics. Let's 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 have um. Let's put it in terms of war. If it's war, the strategy would be to attack, let's say, Afghanistan. But the tactics would be how to attack Afghanistan. I, I, I hope I hope you you're seeing the, the, the slight difference between 
strategy and tactic. So putting it in our context, the, 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 the management will say, you know, we want, um, we, 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 we sell hardware, but now we want a, a new department, let's say it's the network department. And they will give you, we want to create a network department because we found there's a market that we can tap in that can bring, bring in more revenue because at the end of the day, every organization needs to create profit. That's what most of organizations are there for, 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 for non-profit, for making profit, unless if it's a non-profit organization. So middle management now comes up with tactics on how to see the vision of the organization through. Strategic management makes the vision, then the, um, the middle management sees through the vision, which is why direction in middle management is more than when it comes to top management. The, con the planning is more, but organizing in management is, is, is more than in top management because they are now we have to sit down, figure out how we are going to create the, 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 the network manage, the network department, how, what is needed, what employees are needed, what infrastructure is needed, what, what, what information is going to be needed to be passed from which department to where. So middle management now creates all of that. But look at now, the bottom management, they have little planning and they have little organizing because depending on the nature, whether information is organizational uh, model is bottom up or top up, what we mean is uh, decisions are made from the top management filtered to the bottom or decisions, suggestions move from the bottom management, bottom management to the top management. Let me, let me put this to context. We want to develop, top management can say we want to develop a network department, networking department. Middle management says, no, for us to create this department, we need A, B, C, D. Then the board of management now puts that into effect. They are the ones who search for the people, do all the quotations and everything. And that is top down communication. There is bottom-up communication whereby the bottom management, they will say there is now a lot of work. We can share, help each other by creating another department. How do we create another department? What's the nature of the department? That's middle management now says, no, we have we have we need, we, we can create a network, a network, a network department. Then they plan, they they do their forecasts and everything. Then they give that to the top management. Then the top management liases and figures ah oh, no this is a very good idea we can now employ we can now use this 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 um this we can now take care for the management for the decision that we can make hence uh, uh the hence that becomes what top down so uh, depending on the nature of decision or the nature of of information that needs to be passed information can pass from the bottom to the top or from the top to the bottom okay any questions so far before we proceed uh, it's clear sir it's clear so so the, the, you for for you to take this into context let's take uh, an example let's use this example throughout we are at a farm Farm check or check. For farm, we have employees who, who do the hard labor, who, who plow, who harvest, who do, who spray, or and who do all those sorts of things. So we're assuming this is um, a, 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 a crop rearing farm. Let's say we, we, we do wheat or maize. So in that farm, they, they, those employees, they report to someone who's called a foreman. I know it's for a man. We are not good. I know it's for a man, for a man. So that foreman 
is bottom management. His decisions are, 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 no, are, are, are structured. Then that foreman reports to, to the manager because remember, it could be a, a farm where, where it could be it could be a farm under one name, but one farm is in Gweru, one farm is in Arare, one farm is in Blawai. So every farm would have a manager, or one farm would be maybe having um, crops. The other area would be cattle. The other area would be chickens. The other area would be pigs. So each area is people who do the hard labor then they report to the foreman foreman becomes middle management not to bottom management that foreman reports to a manager farm manager that manager farm manager becomes middle management but all those farms all those managers let's say crop manager, maize manager, where we a certain branch, they report to a director who oversees all the operations of the of the company. Let's say there's a department, we agreed there's a department in Blawai, Gweru, Harare. He now oversees how effective the managers are. The manager of maize in Harare, the manager of crops in Harare, manager of crops in, in in Kweru, the manager of crops in, in Blawai. Then another manager oversees the manager of cattle in, 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 in Blawai, manager of cattle in Arai, manager of cattle in Kweru. Then another, another director oversees manager of cattle, manager of chickens, manager of... So you see, that becomes what? Top management. So we've said, with a director, with, with a foreman, for Oman, who's bottom management, with the former for Oman, foreman reports to to uh, okay, accept the, the foreman reports to farm manager, which is middle management. Then the managers report to directors. Those directors and CEOs become top managers. So take this into context. The foreman can assist, can give a, a directive for employees to, to rest. But the manager tells the foreman the type of crop they are, they are going to, 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 be, to be producing that year. The directors now would, would now be the ones who are in charge of way that depending on the nature or maybe let's say let's give environment or climatic they're going to be the one who decide where they are going to expand their growing crops and growing maize let's say they want to diversify they want to create um they want to now start winter 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 crops wheat so the nature of decisions that the foreman does and the manager does and the director does are totally different, which is why I try to explain the difference between structured, same structure, and unstructured. Foreman is told to do what to do with the money. He is told we need 30 employees, we need 30 guys to, to, to harvest our crop. All he does is find those 30 guys. He tells them, guys, at the end of two days, we want, I want this to be done. These decisions are simple. And if you notice the, the bottom management decision, they, they, they don't have, they don't affect the organization in the long run. They only affect the organization in a very short space of time. We want to complete harvesting. Our guys, manager tells guys harvesting needs to be done by let's say today's the 25th, by the 26th, we should, we should be done harvest. The bottom manager now needs to understand what he's going to do. He needs to know what he's going to do to complete the task in this given period of time. 
So that means he needs to organize how to perform that. So his level of organizing is mainly bound by the task that is given by the manager. He does very little plan because all the planning is done for him by the manager. His control is mainly on what's the, the infrastructure that is given with him. But now, his direction now affects everyone. So that is why he the, he's given, guys, we need to harvest by, by tomorrow. So he, his, his direction has to be bigger than everyone else's because he does the hard work and that's where most of the work is done. That's where all, all, all the work is done. That's where Tungachi, that's where it, it's not I, it's not safe for me to say it's the important the most important department but it it is it is it will be worth noting Kuti. that's where products are made that is somewhat the core that's where core business is done so the direction is to be big now we that's the format Middle management, those are the managers. The source of decisions that they're going to make is, okay, are we going to farm directors this, this year or next year we're going to have five, five hectares? That is what the, the direction that they're going to do. So he needs to organize so that he is, gives all the resources to to the manager, to the foreman. So you find that his main task is to organize that that vision is important. That vision is realized. So the top manager would say, guys, we need an increase in output. Last year we 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 got 10 times. Now we we need 20 times. Those are the directors giving the managers a, a task. So it's up to the managers to find out how they can create, they can, they can expand or further get the objectives that they were given by the directors. And then they tell us, guys, for we need to increase our hectare so that we get more tonnage at the end of the day. So those are the nature of one decision. Two, if you notice how they are communicating, that's the information that is being passed from layer to layer. So it is very important for you to understand these pie charts. Like I said before, these pie charts, they are more or less the same with, with um, assignments that we, we gave you where I was asking you guys to explain um, positions in management. We are saying, there's top management, there is middle management, there's bottom management, there's accounts, there's human resources, there's manufacturing, and there's marketing. So account, uh, we look at this bottom management, there is chief accountant. People who do most of the work, they are the accounts, clerks, the accountant. Those accountants report to a chief accountant. The decisions that the chief accountant does uh, are going to be limited because he doesn't have, uh, he's, he's going to do what are called structured decisions. And above that, a chief accountant is the, maybe let's say the accounting manager. He, he relays information to the manager and the manager now gives to the accounts direct, information to the accounts direct. So that is what I was expecting from all of you. On, 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 on that on that assignment. That's it, it, it's what it's assignment two. If I'm correct. Is it assignment two? Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. We, it's, it's assignment one. It's assignment one. No, that's fine. So 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 that's 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 all I that's all I was expecting of you. That's what I was expecting. If there's the marketing manager, there's the marketing director, there's the marketing manager, and probably there's the chief marketing officer. 
So all the marketeers, marketing officers, report to the chief marketing officer. Then the chief marketing officer reports to the marketing manager. Then the marketing manager reports to the marketing director and the board. So the nature of decisions that they're going to make varies with the level that they are in. So that is what I was expecting of you from 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 that from that end. So so can I have questions? What any questions on on on, on this? Feel free to ask questions because if you don't ask questions, I can ask questions. No question. Uh, let me ask a question. Yes, sir. Let me let me ask a question. What, what, in terms of control, why is it bottom management has got more control decisions made than top management? The question is, why is it top management has is a, a smaller control? Yet they're the ones that do uh, that have got the organizational vision and mission at hand than bottom, but the bottom management have got a bigger percentage of control. Okay, I think it's due to the fact that the top management does not have the direct control or the direct involvement with the employees as compared to the bottom management and the middle management, of which we realize that the middle management is involved in ensuring that the bottom management adheres and accomplishes the organizational goals, where the bottom management has to ensure the control of the provided resources that the employees use all those resources effectively to attain the goals. That, that is correct. That is correct. Because at the end of the day, um, the products or key key values of the organization, they are met at the bottom management because they have, they have the people that do the actual core business as opposed to top management that just oversees. Amen. Uh, we we'll pro 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 let's proceed. Okay, managerial skills. There are two important skills for every manager to, po to possess. Number one is communication skills and problem solving. You cannot call yourself a manager if you cannot solve problems. You cannot call yourself a manager if you cannot communicate. Uh, these are key in such a way that in any in any in any in any in any, in any organization. Communication is important because you need to be able to remember listening is part of communication. You need to understand what is expected of you from the top management, then from the layer that's above you, then convey that information to the layer that is below you. So you need to be able to communicate. When you are communicating, you, it it sends out the clear objectives of 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 what you are of of fit for purpose. You 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 if you fail to communicate, let's say an example, our example, the management requires you to provide. Um, we want to start a, a new crop. Let's say um, tobacco. We want to diversify tobacco. The top management failed to communicate properly to middle management. So it it remember when we playing that game when we we're younger, which which is called remember you broken telephone. If anyone ever played that game, broken telephone, guys, broken telephone, where you whisper something in someone's ears and they try to listen, then they go whisper into someone else's ear. Then you discover how how information is going to be distorted until it gets to the last person. 
So this is the same problem. This is the same challenge that effective communication tries to solve. If you communicate something effectively and efficiently and properly, it, it, it is easier for people, the person you're communicating to, to understand. And then at the end, the end of the day, it, 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 it sets out the clear goals of the organization. You need to be able to create, to solve problems because like it or not, problems tend to okay. And you need to be able to solve those problems. And problems come in all sorts of pro in all sorts of men. They could, hence you need to have at times the, the times the the decisions that you would make after when you're solving those problems, they're structured. But at times they, they they're not structured. If you if there's veld fire in your farm, the nature the problems that you're going to, to solve are going to be dependent on how the fire is where the fire is and the amount of damage the fire is making. So you need to have very good problems, problem solving skills. If your if your two employees are not getting along, are not getting along well, then you need to be able to solve that kind of problem. So like I said before, problems come in all sorts of manner and the nature in which they're going to be solved depends on the nature of the problem. So this this is why you are given leeway to have this. each 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 layer has got type of decisions that are made, but um, the nature whether it's going to be structured or semi structured is dependent on the layer. If if two managers fight, you, that is going to be handled differently from two people who who. who Tractor drivers fight. So decisions, are problems, pro, pro, nature of problems that okay is is vast, and so that means you need to have a vast, um, an acute sense of problem solve. If you fail to solve, if if you fail to solve problems, try not try not to be management because it's one of your key 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 result areas. All right. Moving on, we now have a, a table. I hope you all seen the table, which has different systems that are there. We have TPS. What does TPS stand for? Edward, what does TPS stand for? Um, TPS uh, transaction processing systems. Right. Uh, from office systems, we've, we're from uh, from TPS, we've got office systems. Right? From office systems, we've got KWS. Philippa, welcome. What does that stand for? Philippa. What does that stand for? Knowledge based system. Good. So, which means you discover that that acronym. Yeah, guys, go. Is flawed, that? Am I right or am I wrong? Oh, did, you did. You knowledge didn't notice. I'm. I'm. I, I understand. Knowledge. No. That's okay, ma'am. I, I. I. You are very right. But I'm saying, did you guys notice that it says K W S? So that's a. That's an error. Are we co am I correct or I am wrong? Yes, you are correct. Say that was not correct. So so you never noticed that. No, right? so you never noticed that. That's fine. That's fine. Um, 
So on top of that, we've got MIA. No, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> on top of that, we've got management information system. Then we've got decision support system. Then the third one, let's find it. Let's hear someone else who is it say anything. Okay. Justice. Okay, what does EIS stand for? Optus. Sir Justice, you can thank you. We want to hear your voice as well. Ah, uh, yes, left. All right, uh, Tau, EIS, Akama. Tau. Hello, welcome to the information system. All right, is this the Tau from Arara region? Uh -huh. How are you? Uh, I'm good, and you? Uh, we are surviving. You are moving, aren't you? Yes. Yeah, right. I, I said, Chaka Chaka part one in Mujita Fundamentals and Mabita MIS. Yeah, it's called progress. All right. So, the reason why this tape this, I, 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 okay, the nature of how I, I, I go about when I'm interacting with your is I, I, I prefer going about it in an unorthodox way, whereby we touch every little thing and that way we get to hear your input as opposed to me just presenting telling you things and having uh, a slide in a 30 30 30 slideshow a slideshow in 30 slides but our, our the entirety of our course is hinged on this table if you understand this table you you are you have understood my course. Everything that we've been talking from, from, from the beginning of this tutorial leads us to this table. We say the system has got an input. So now we've got input, information input. For me, information input, I, I would say that is that. Is that. From, from, we said it's a system, so it's got processing. So that's the part where we say, yeah, now they process. The output that becomes the information that you can to, 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 to provide. And the users are just the, the key players that will be charged with, with that particular system. So what this simply means is we've got various information systems that operate in different layers. Of, of our organization. Some operate in most of the layers, some operate in a certain in a certain layer only. So if you understand the input, you understand how it's processed, you understand the output, and you know who is in charge with that. For me personally, you would have done my full course. So you discover that we're going to spend a bit more time on, 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 on this table. Are, are, we, are, we, are we in agreement or you want us to do 400 slides? Uh, maybe just a little explanation will do, sir. We, we, we are, we, we're going to explain. We're going to explain it bit by bit as, 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 we, as, we, as, as we proceed. So, from, from, from there, you need to understand that there are different models that each and every layer uses. So, so this model would normally affect how it's going to be processed mainly. So it depends on 
one, the input that you're going to get. So the, you, the input that you get also has a bearing on the output that you're going to get. So this also means you need to have different models to tackle that. So we have, we've got models that are there, the types of models that are called. You can use mathematical formulas, whereby you're saying um, you need maximum number of, of sales or profit. So now you, you need to say, what is, what is profit? You make a formula to calculate profit. Profit is sales and it's cost. That becomes your mathematical what? Mathematical model. But now, you, that means you need to have an input of cell, an input of cost. An input of cell could be an output that comes from someone from a bottom level management. So that is what I was trying to explain when I was saying someone's information can be an above, the information of a bottom layer is data for the middle layer. They process that data into information. That information they give it to the top layer, which is the executive layer, which is the top strategy level. It comes when they get that information, it is in the for them it's data. They process it into information. So we've got mathematical formulas, we've got graphics, a graphics model whereby you're using data flow diagrams, using flow charts, using Gantt charts using DFTs using ERA. We, we have done this in when we're doing systems analysis and design and, and, and requirements engineering. So to, that's graphical model of, 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 of representing of processing. We have narrative whereby you're using reports and um, um, you, you, you report the written communication. You give us the report of what transpired this past season when we, let's say we're using the farm as an example. If you now type, no, we had the 13 cattle, 10 gave birth. Um, we have out of those 10, nine survived. So that's the form of a written documentation. That is the narrative model. Then there's physical model whereby three dimensional we need to go physically see those ten cattle that you claim the aka 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 we have. Then someone goes there and actually sees um well, what do we have? So from there we've got as the flow of 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 the system. So the flow normally is from input to process to output. So the flow has got different different types of flows that we can have. It could be either personal or machinery or monetary or material. It depends with the nature of the organization. The nature of us, we the core business of the institution is to make quality graduates. So the flow of information needs to lead to us having quality graduates who know what we have explained or taught them throughout the course. So our flow would our flow would, would depend heavily on that. It depends with the business model also, the nature of business that the company is partaking. That that determines the flow. If your financial institution of it's going to be it's going to be financial flow. So it's, it's, it comes back to the, the, we mentioned information. Information is to be relevant, accurate, time, complete, that we own. So, so far, any questions? questions for me.
at strategic level you know you know the funny thing is we 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 we, we talked about all right we talked about this um when we were in passing and for those who are listening i'm sure to shop in you mentioned strategic level has got different types of problems number one different types of um decisions number two we 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 know what that is guys okay i've got a question what's the difference between a supply chain and a value chain ladies and gentlemen the difference between a supply chain and the value chain um uh, i'd say a supply chain um, shows the um, uh, the movement of goods from uh, um, production to distribution to where we find it finally gets to the end user whereas the value chain shows the change in value um let's say from raw material to uh, process product until it gets to also the end user so the supply chain shows the path in which the product takes from raw material until it gets to the end user while the value chain shows the value changes for the product from raw material until it's processed to the actual value that you get when you are purchasing a product per se. Okay. So, any, any questions on supply chain and value chain? Okay. This brings us to something, uh, something called Porter's Five Force um five fours if if we ever heard of it guys Porters. porter porter states that um um there are forces that act upon a, a product or a company that define how you going to proceed as a business on your value chain. So he proposes, his model proposes that um, you, 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 uh, 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 an organization or is, is, is either one force is, is power. One force that should have is supply power. Put in. I've got, I've got, let's say an example is Coco. They have, they have sort of more or less monopoly over the whole business. So they have supply power with, where they can, they can detect the prices that they have because they've got that power in the supply. Wange Colliery is the only company that supplies coal so it has um supply power because of the nature of its business so that is what's called supply power buying power the other the other force is buying power how much can i afford to buy this is an example that I'll give you, GMB. GMB is the sole buyer legally of maize. So it can dictate the amount, the prices that it can pay for, for your product. You, you, you understand now the difference between supply power and buying power. So if you've got supply power, you can dictate if you've got buying power, you 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 can dictate the amount of prices that you can, can buy. An example is Jedu Shema Streets. You have you, 
you have ten dollars okay you have hundred dollars usd what do you have do you have buying power or selling power guys example what do you have Today i've got 10 i've got 100 usd right now can you explain it in terms of selling supplier power and buying power uh, i think that i will be having the buying power in terms of acquiring the the ZL. The Zimbabwe dollar. All right. You 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 you'd be having power because you you have it's, it's, you have something that someone needs. You have USD and someone needs that USD. But Ed, remember, look at it this way: if you need that that RTGS badly. The person is got buying power over you. So you 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 need you need to think outside the box when you're tackling this person that would have this kind of, of scenario. This all this depends on the perspective that you're putting it across. If you have, if you know for a fact that what you have is got value, you could take some motor right now and you notice the only car that's is Yagabara. You've got supplier power because you can detect the price. But if you say if you're selling, let's say Honda Fit, everyone knows those things. But so that means the person who's buying now has buying power. So it depends with 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 the nature of, of the situation that's there. The other thing is threat of new entry. You're selling, you're selling your car. And it, what other new entry can be injected? That can be a threat to you. An example, Coca-Cola was the sole producer of Coke, of Coke, the Coke beverage. Then a new entry came in in the form of Pepsi. So now Pepsi now, because Coca-Cola was the sole provider, it detected prices. But when Pepsi came in, it came in as a as a as a as a as a, as a new end. It threatened my prices. So market can tends to shake when there is threat of a new end. Threat of a new entry is in tandem with competitive rival. Depending on the nature of of of, of, of that new threat, the new threat can be turned as a rival. But if the threat is not as insignificant, the rivalry is also is also um, not that much. An example: Qualcomm is the major supplier of Qualcomm, and 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 um, and and um, pork products. But there is an arbitrage called uh, Bellevue arbitrage. These guys, they, it, was, it, it was threat of a new entry in the sense that they came, they, it's, so it's an upper tour. So all they wanted was you bring your pork, farmers bring their pork, they slaughter, and they sell on behalf of their, uh, the farm. Then the farmer gets their money. So it was the prices of pork that was being supplied by pork was now affected by threats of him. You an example another example you've got a butcher, let's say at in town, and opposite you, someone creates or has a has a new butcher opposite you. Your prices are going to be also determined by his prices. If he lowers his prices, you would be forced to lower your price. But it also depends on the type of product that you have. You are producing because products are in two terms of quality and quantity. So that also is a bearing. The other one is threat of substitution. The other force, the last force, will be threat of substitution. 
you sell maize. You unutenge sa hupu, maize meal. Substitutions for maize meal. There is rice, there is spaghetti, there is macaroni. Those are substitutions. So the more the, sub, the more the substitutions they've got a bearing on how you're going to price your how you're going to price your, your your product. So these are the five forces that we were identified by God that affect the value chain. Number one is supplier power. Number two is buyer power. Number three is competitive rival. Number four is threat of new ends. Number five is threat of substitution. Any questions on Porter? Ladies and gentlemen, uh, so you understand. And the silence is either you are you are confused or you're content. So I hope it means you're confused, you're content. All right. So why was I talking of quarters five level of five, five forces? The nature of decisions that are going to be made are going to be made in the executive information, top management. So the information system that, that is in there needs to cater for those for those for those forces. So the, at the end of the day, your projection and responses to query need to be need to be able to to solve the problem that is created by those five forces. So these decisions are mainly made by senior management. There's the if you if people who are going to be worried about the, those forces are senior management because they affect them directly. That is so. Like again, I said, the decisions will become unstructured. So now you understand where it's fit. It's fitting into um, the the executive information system. So basically, executive information system is an information system where it, it aggregates internal data and processes using graphics and simulations to give an output, which is a response to queries, which is being prepared by senior management, your directors, your CEOs, your CTOs. Strive, when, when Strive Masiwa entered the playing field, there was Net1. Then Strive brought Econet. Strive, Econet came in with threat of a new end, threat of substitution, competitive rival, those three. And they were so strong. It's like that customers moved from net one to econet they they structured their brand or their product in such a way that it was it was easier for it to grow that's why you discover that econet is one of the biggest metrics that we have Ninth, almost everyone is an econet line but some of telesell or network lines. It, 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 when it penetrated the market, its threat was so significant. Now we've got other telecoms which tried to penetrate, but the threat wasn't so significant. Telesell. It's brought in a cheaper product, but the product at the end of the day, the threat wasn't as real, the threat wasn't as, the rival was, was, wasn't as competitive, and although it was a substitute product. So whenever you're tackling some of these, these questions, and any question that needs to has any bearing with senior management, if you fail to write Porter's five forces, 
you you will be waffling. It creates a very stable way of tackling such 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 problems. So that's 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 executive information systems for them. It's it it is mainly for senior management. Senior management, directors, board of directors, chief executive officers, chief operation officers, chief technical officers, chief security officers, chief. So, so th those guys would have a bearing in where the organization will be in the next 10 years, 20 years. They make those decisions for you. Any questions? Um, it's unfortunate, guys. We have reached our two-hour mark. Um, I would have wanted to start. We we still, we're supposed to start at ten, but we ended up starting at uh, twenty twenty past um, twelve. So. This marks the end of our first tutorial. So Mr. Edward he is our class rep. He's going to tell us where we're starting from. We're starting from decision support system, Tichit Zika to until we get to TPS. So with this, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. If there are questions, please feel free, you can ask. Any questions? Guys, thank, thank you, sis. Uh, actually, oh. I think we managed to have some free explanation on various areas, uh, but I have to ask concerning the quarters 540. Um, okay. Are we saying that the implementation of these 540 actually only affects the, the, the top level management? 